Hello and welcome to Miniature Adventures. I'm Big Lee and this week I want to talk about dice having no memory, wargamers and the superstitions surrounding their dice. So this week's talking point was inspired by a conversation I had with my daughter while at the Medway Gaming Festival last weekend. Uh, one store in particular had a wild variety of dice, dice accessories from trays and bags and everything in between. And we ended up discussing our contradictory relationships with our dice, ranging from the purely practical through to the outright superstitious. Uh, it, in the exciting and varied world of wargaming, dice serve as the arbiters of fate, the silent deciders of victory or defeat. These small, unassuming cubes or other polyhedral shapes adorned with pips or numbers hold an outsized place in the hearts and minds of wargamers, board gamers and role players the world over. Despite their simplicity and the statistical laws that govern their roles, dice often become imbued with a sense of mystique and superstition among those who wield them. So today's talking point explores the common superstitions wargamers hold about dice, the reasons behind those beliefs, and the fundamental truth that dice have no memory. Wargaming, a hobby that combines strategy, history, artistry, relies heavily on chance to simulate the uncertainties of battle. Dice are the primary instruments of this randomness, determining the outcome of attacks, defences, various other in-game events. And the role of a die can make the difference between a triumphant charge and a disastrous retreat, and I know all about that, turning the tide of battle in an instant. Now given their crucial role, it is no surprise that Wargamers often develop strong, let's just call it strong feelings about their dice, attributing to them qualities that transcend mere randomness. Wargamers frequently exhibit a range of superstitions about their dice. These beliefs, while often irrational and pervasive, can significantly influence how play players handle their dice. Now, I've been playing tabletop war games and role playing games for over 40 years, so I've seen Quite a few superstitions manifest themselves, but there are four common beliefs that come up time and time again. And if I'm honest, I've probably exhibited some of those behaviours myself over the years. Now, The first type commonly held by nearly every type of gamer, regardless of the game they play, is the curse of consecutive rolls. This manifests itself as the belief that a die that has rolled high numbers multiple times in a row uh, is due for a low roll or that a die that has rolled poorly has got to improve on the next roll. This is often referred to as the gambler's fallacy, the incorrect belief that past events can somehow influence the outcome of independent random events. The second superstition that many wargamers have are, uh, about dice are that they consider them to be lucky or unlucky dice. A die that has performed well in crucial moments might be regarded as a talisman, while one that has consistently rolled poorly might be banished from the table. Some players will take this to the extreme, and back when this channel was first starting I did a video of the most common punishments inflicted on misbehaving dice, and I'll make sure I'll put a link somewhere up here for you to, to see that video. Now, wargamers also have some unusual rituals, let's call it that, when it comes to their dice. Some players engage in rituals to warm up their dice before a game. This might involve rolling them a certain number of times or performing specific actions believed to prime the dice for better results. So rolling a set of dice to get the bad rolls out of the way is one that I see time and time again. Now, the fourth common superstition, superstitious behaviour is linked to the way Dice are stored and handled, both before and during the game. Now, some players believe that dice should be kept separate to avoid transferring bad luck from one batch to another, while others have specific bags or containers they use to ensure their dice are in the best possible condition for rolling well. And then there are those players who have different piles of dice for different types of rolls, even if all of the dice are the same. And who hasn't witnessed a player who refuses to allow anyone else to touch their dice in case they impart bad luck on them? 
Now if I had more time we could probably identify many more categories of player superstitions linked to their dice but maybe we should begin to ask why do we do this? The superstitions we hold about our dice are deeply rooted in human psychology, which is why they're often unconscious behaviours, even in the most rational of wargamers. Uh, several cognitive biases and psychological phenomena contribute to these beliefs. For example, humans have a natural tendency to recognise patterns, even when there are none there to be seen. In the chaotic outcomes of dice rolls, players often perceive streaks or trends, attributing them to some intrinsic property of the dice, rather than pure chance. And even though we know the results are random, we just can't help ourselves from seeing those patterns. Now anyone who plays games involving some element, some element of chance can also succumb to confirmation bias. Players tend to remember the times when their superstition seems to seem to be validated and forget the times when they're not. If a player becomes uh, believes a particular dice or, or group of dice is lucky and it rolls well at a crucial moment, the event reinforces that superstition, while instances where the die rolls poorly are often overlooked or even rationalised away. War gamers can also be subject to the control illusion. This is where engaging in rituals and believing in the power of lucky dice can give players a false sense of power over the inherently random process of dice rolling. The illusion of control can be comforting, particularly in the high stakes and often tense environment of a war game. And lastly, we all have emotional investment in the games that we play, which influences how we view the randomness of dice rolling. Wargaming is not just a strategic exercise, it's an emotional experience because players invest time, creativity and passion into their little metal men. The highs and lows of gameplay can amplify superstitious behaviours as players seek to influence the outcome of their battles in any way that they can. Now hopefully you've been nodding along to most of this, maybe even some, recognising some of the behaviours in yourself or your circle of gaming friends. But now we get to the sad reality, which is that dice have no memory. Despite the prevalence of superstitions, the mathematical reality is that dice do not behave differently because the previous roll was good or bad. Each roll of a fair dice is an independent event with no bearing on previous or future rolls. The probability of rolling any particular number on a six-sided dice, for instance, is always one in six, regardless of what's been rolled before. The principle is rooted in the fundamental laws of probability and randomness and can only be broken by cheating with loaded dice. And of course, none of you are gonna do that, are you? Now to illustrate, consider a sequence of 10 rolls of a six-sided dice. In the first five rolls, all results are high numbers, you know, say a five or a six. It might seem intuitive to expect lower numbers to follow. However, the die doesn't remember its previous results. The chance of rolling the six on the next roll remains exactly the same, one in six, just as it was for each of the previous rolls. The lack of memory is a defining characteristic of true randomness. Now, of course, understanding that dice have no memory can be both liberating and terrifying for wargamers. By accepting the inherent randomness of dice rolls, players can focus more on their strategies and less on attempting to influ influence the outcomes through superstitions. Embracing the randomness means recognizing that over time, the law of large numbers will balance out the highs and lows. Good and bad rolls are part of the game's fabric, adding to the unpredictability and excitement that make wargaming so engaging. And influencing the outcome of your battles is more to do with how you play than any perceived effect of the dice. The stupid superstitions surrounding our dice are a testament to the human desire for control and pattern recognition in the face of randomness. While these beliefs can add a layer of ritual and personal connection to the game, it's crucial to remember that dice have no memory. Each roll is an independent event governed by the impartial laws of probability. By embracing this truth, wargamers can better appreciate the role of luck in their battles and enjoy it the unpredictable thrill of the game. So as usual, I want to ask, what do you think? Have I spoken heresy? No, you're about to rage quit your subscription to this channel. Please don't, by the way. <laughs> uh, or are you laughing gently at the truth of our superstitious uh, superstitions laid bare? And do you or anyone you know have any unusual or quirky dice superstitions not mentioned in today's topic? As always, I would love to hear what you think in the comments below. 
it's a time for a hobby update. Now, as mentioned in my introduction, I visited the Medway Gaming Festival last weekend. I was accompanied by my daughter, who's very much a, a role player and computer gamer, despite being forced to play war games when she was a child. Actually, our respective fandoms overlap quite a lot, so I knew we would both enjoy the show. Uh, not least because I got it was Father's Day and I got to spend time with my daughter. Now, I was at the festival last year with many of the rejects playing a series of naval battles uh, culminating in the Battle of Medway, also known as the Dutch Raid in June 1667. We were playing using Mad for War, um, our excellent set of rules, really enjoyed it, had a fantastic weekend. But we were so busy with the games and talking to the public that I barely got away from the table the whole weekend and consequently hardly saw the rest of the festival beyond our immediate surroundings. So this year I wanted to visit as a punter and enjoy the event in its full glory. Fortunately, we decided to attend on the Sunday because there was some very heavy rain showers on the Saturday, resulting in some localised flooding and I got shown some photographs and video of overloaded drain pipes overflowing like fountains. But on Sunday the weather was much kinder, it was nice and warm but not too hot and we had a lovely, lovely day. Now the event is an eclectic mix of games of all kinds, from computer games, new and old, war games, role playing games, card games, and in addition there were quite a few cosplayers there on the Sunday making this a very colourful event, something akin to, I don't know, a slimmed down version of Comic Con. Um, there were plenty of trade stands selling all manner of games, toys, memorabilia, comics and artwork. You know, this isn't a war game show, but there are several tabletop games mixed in amongst the stalls, making this a very varied and enjoyable celebration of geek culture. And I thoroughly enjoyed spending the day with my daughter, and I expect this won't be my last visit to the Medway Gaming Festival. So a quick look at the workbench uh, update this week. My moratorium on painting anything that isn't needed for my upcoming Bosworth game is still in place, even though it's hard to ignore several projects that I really want to do. But I've been working on a few small terrain items for 6mm games, some of which may also make it onto the table for the game in a few weeks' time. One item that needs to be done, or has, uh, has been now been done, was a remake of the infamous Marsh in which Richard III is said to have met his end at Bosworth. I had something made, but I really wasn't happy with it, so I've made another version of the Marsh, this time more in keeping with the archaeology of the battlefield and my interpretation of the maps and, the, and the, say, the archaeology that I've read most recently. And I've also been working on a few small groups of trees to use as decoration, um, yeah, more than anything else, rather than as terrain. Um, the beauty of these sort of items is they can be used in any 6mm of my 6mm collections. A tree is a tree, regardless of the time period. Period. Well that's it for this week, as always if you enjoyed the video please join in the conversation in the comments below and remember to like, subscribe and share. And if you want to keep up to date with weekly content from my channel please tap the bell notification icon. So until next week, stay safe, keep gaming and of course keep rolling high.